This is Tim from Chiroop. You wouldn't consider assessing a patient with sciatica without performing a straight leg raise or a Brigard's test. So why wouldn't you do the same for a patient who has an upper extremity neuropathy? Well today I'm going to show you three ways to assess the radial, the median, the ulnar nerve to do the upper extremity equivalent of a straight leg raise. Nerves are like bungee cords and they don't like two things. They don't like compression, think of Phelan's test for the carpal tunnel, and they don't like stretch or modified or reverse Phelan's test for the carpal tunnel. Nerves need to stretch and flex. Remember the course of the nerve. The median nerve comes down the front of the arm right through the forearm and supplies the first three and a half digits of the hand. The ulnar nerve takes a similar course except it dives behind the medial epicondyle and then comes back up to supply the fourth and fifth digit. And the radial nerve comes from underneath the arm through the elbow emerging about four finger breaths distal to the lateral epicondyle and supplies the dorsum of the hand. And none of those nerves like to be compressed or stretched. So our test today are going to take advantage of the latter. We're going to stretch those nerves and see can we reproduce the patient's symptoms. So to stretch the median nerve, we're going to have the patient put their hand into full extension to stretch it at the wrist like Phelan's test. And to stretch the upper portion, the brachial plexus, we'll have them laterally flex away from the side that we're testing and then take their arm back into extension. If there's reproduction of pain or paresthesia along the distribution of the median nerve, we can be pretty certain the median nerve is involved somewhere. The radial nerve stretch test is performed in a similar way except we're going to have the patient put their hand into flexion this time, again laterally flexing the head to stretch the brachial plexus, and then move their hand back into a butler tip position, much like a butler who's waiting for a tip. That's a full stretch of the radial nerve, and if the patient has reproduction of pain or paresthesia, we know that's involved. And finally, the ulnar nerve, this is easiest to have the patient perform by themselves, to move their finger into a circle, bring their finger, their index finger up onto their cheek as though they're getting ready to flick their cheek, and then flip that upside down into a Mr. Magoo monocle. If there's reproduction of the chief complaint of numbness or tingling into the distribution of the ulnar nerve, we know there's stretch. It may be around the cubital tunnel or it may be more proximal, even the thoracic outlet syndrome. So those are the ways that we stretch those tests. If we find that they're involved, what we're going to do is have the patient floss that nerve. And that's the topic of next week's blog. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.